Smart. Recording is starting. Here comes the intro. They said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man, America F1. <laughs> America F1, coming to you straight from San Francisco, California, Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. Cheers, everyone. We're now coming from San Francisco. I'm coming straight from London this time. Paul's in Scotland. I'm in London because... I'm going to the Silverstein Grand Prix this week. It's going to be amazing. Can't wait. I can't wait. If I have any money left, really, to be honest, I took my whole family out here. We came from Paris. Now we are in London. And I need another job, I guess. Good luck. I don't know, Paul, can you loan me some money? Because every time I leave this hotel, money just flies out the window. It flies. It flies faster than Mac Verstappen mm-hmm. into an incident because he's being pressured because either you move or we crash. And that's the Max Verstappen way. What do you think, Paul? Well, first of all, I'd like to say hi, everybody, in the internet. And second of all, I'm in Ireland, not in Scotland. See, you're better. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's not important. It's just, not I just need to fly the correct flag here. So I hope you're enjoying London. London is an amazing place. I've lived in London and I, I love going back to London. One of the, my favorite things is to go to museums and I love dim sum in Chinatown. Wait, so, which museum should we go to, by the way? Well, the Science Museum is amazing. And okay. then there's the British Museum as well. That they, they, I would love to go back to the History Museum as well. They're, they're, just London does museums very, very well. But there's, mm-hmm. they're going to do a lot of walking and take a map. Because they're pretty big. Okay. But they're worth going to the history. Just the, the artifacts and the stories that they have in there are worth the journey. So... Well, we're here to talk about the Australian Grand Prix yeah. and recap the crash fest that everyone's talking about around the internet. So let's just yeah. get that. And the, the bad thing about that is no one's talking about George. No one's talking about George's second win. I, I actually appreciated the way that George took the win and said, some days you're here to pick up the crumbs. And, and he, he was very magnanimous about it. You know, he didn't gloat like I won the race. It was, this is amazing because other people messed up. It happens in Formula One occasionally. And when it does, the others pick up the crumbs. Hence, your other Hulkenberg sixth. Mm. If, if, if he, that wouldn't have been, it would have been eighth. What he almost is like, what Notre Dame because he predicted, he said, they, they asked him a question in the pre-race, like the day before. And he just said, well, I'm going to just cruise back they back and see what happens out front and be prepared in case something happens. Yeah. Hmm. But it was, like, to see a, it was brilliant to see a Haas be controlled like that and come in like that. It was really, really nice for them. I have nothing against Hulkenberg. I have nothing, I have nothing glorious for him. God love him. He's never even hit the podium, but you know, he, he is a guy that, uh, I hope he does really well in the, in the following years. I hope he's not too old to, to hone and change the new Audi team that's going to come. It'll be great. But I know where you want to go with this and you want to talk about the Red Bull Ring, which is not my favorite track. Um, yes, it brought up uh, some surprising endings this time. And we didn't have to listen to the that particular national anthem this time. Right. Yeah. So well, I'd say it was a bit of a hit. Okay. We got... I got the chance to go to the Red Bull Ring last year. We went to the race last year, and we actually sat where there was the guy who was flying through the air, and he he fell on fell on the ground. You know, he had the the space suit kind of, and he oh, was yeah. flying. Oh, the guy with the jet, the, the jet yeah. pack on him. Oh, yeah. yeah. That there, is such a dangerous idea. Yeah. That is that is just that is Darwin calling. What a little cool. 
couple of jets to my back and let me go. They have racing doing that now. You know that? They have races now doing that. Oh, some, of the, doing... some of the, I swear to God, some of the American channels that, you know, seek out these kind of XL sports, whatever you want to call it. And they are now doing racing. So two people go and they race and they've got to go, th- it's over water and they've got to go through like the, like the, like the planes, you know, the, the these little tiny planes that do the sports. Hey, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. exactly like that using jetpacks mounted on people. It's nuts. Anyway, we're wandering. Sorry. So you yeah, enjoyed I mean, it, I did. I, I, what I liked about the Red Bull Ring is one, the Mac fans were awesome. I had such a great time with them. They had their leader, leader holes in and all that. And I think I might have drank too much because basically it's a big drinking party. Like all of them in orange and the, the guys in leader holes. And, and they have this like one room where they play the music and everything. And they're, they're all singing and dancing and drinking. And I had to be helped to my seat. Don't tell me. Don't, don't tell me why. But yeah, I might have had one too many. But it was, I had a great time. And everything that people say about the Max fans being like purely like mean and nasty. And I mean, I had my Mercedes gear on and they didn't care. We had a great time. Yeah. It was time. I, I love Austria is a beautiful country. The racetrack, ah, it's not one of my favorite racetracks as far as tracks go, but the scenery, it's about well, nothing. When you were there, when you was there, there, we had a lot of track limit problems. And mm-hmm. uh, this time around, the track limit problems were kind of eradicated um, with the change of track for, for this time. So it made some changes. It also threw up a lot of gravel, which unseated a lot of people. Did you see the damage that was done to Lewis's car? Yeah. Well, where do you get that big hole in the side? Pump? Yeah. Now I don't know if that's genuine. I'm, I'm very, very, you know, you know that I'm a huge contributor on seven or eight different fan clubs, including the one that I, I admin own, whatever the Sir Lewis Hamilton Ferrari F1 club. And right. somebody popped that up with a picture of the hole in the side of in the side pod. And I was a bit perturbed because that is not on some of the major outlets. It's not on yeah. Sky News F1, sorry, Sky, Sky F1. It's not on there. It's not on a few of the bigger ones. Now, I would have thought that if he had that big a hole in his side pod, that that would have been discussed. Now, I've seen articles that say Toto says he had floor damage, but there's no, you know, I, I think that there would have been hundreds and thousands of shots if he had a hole that big in his side pod. So I am wary of that piece of news as to being whether it's real or not. And I'm waiting just until the weekend to hear. Where where did he get the floor damage? Apparently the initial contact with Carlos Sainz. So yeah, no, I can understand the floor damage happening from that, but the side pod damage with that would have been stones kicking up or something like those stones were pretty big. There's three, I thought incidents that we should talk about. First, let's get, let's get the. You know, the big Max out of the room. Let's talk about Max and Norris. Give me your thought. Look, I'm, I'm a bit acidic where Max is concerned. And you know this and any of your, any of your viewers who have seen me on here three or four times now, five times. It, look, my attitude towards Max is he has not changed. He, he came into this business in Formula One where he is, I think he is a one trick pony and I'm not taking away from the skill set that is. If he get, if he has the car to be in front, he will stay in front and he's okay. And he makes very, very few errors, but in wheel to wheel racing, if he's not getting his own way, if his car, which is where Red Bull is going now. So what we have now is all top three teams have finally sorted out their error, whether they go up or down. So it could be McLaren, it could be Ferrari, it could be Mercedes up or down, up or down each race. They have found a bit more and then they drop back and then they come back a bit. So this is, we're seeing this race on race at the moment. McLaren is doing okay. McLaren's on top of it. Mercedes is coming back. Ferrari's dropped back. So it's kind of weird to watch this, but the evolution of it seems to be that people have caught up with their, the aero package of Red Bull. Their engine was never that strong. And we all know mm-hmm. Mercedes engine is pretty strong. That's in the, that's in the Aston who are not doing great. Their arrows falling apart. The McLaren and in the Mercedes and they're in one other car as well. Sorry. But anyway, 
the point I'm making is that now, as everybody is catching them up with Aero, Red Bull is having to stretch their car and stretch their tactics. And we saw this. We've seen this now. And it's not just a one-hit wonder. This has happened over the last three races, I think four races. People are putting it to max. And now we go back to my theory on Max, and I don't think it changes, which is I believe Max is a one-trick pony. It is. Get up near you, get beside you, slipstream you, get into the corner, don't brake so hard, forget to turn your wheel, and nerf your opponent off track. And I've been quoted on many folks saying this, and I still think that it's, this is what's happening again. Max has gone back to being his one-trick pony self. Um, if he's got to fight for that position, he will fight like a dirty dog. And I don't like it. I just don't think it's sportsmanship like, and uh, the, the, your audience will be 50 50 right now going, no, 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 that's how a driver is. And then everybody else will say, well, no, there are rules and there's a way to drive. How come mm -hmm. the other drivers don't have to do that? And they pass each other all the time behind in the back of the pack, in the middle of the pack. And um, you do that, they would be penalized pretty damn fast. And the penalty does not. So the penalties that he was given do not match the crime. He took Lando out this time. And I know Lando did a couple of dives and he tried it hard, but he was trying to play fair. Like he he got him on the slipstreams. He was going to pass him and then Mac closed it up. And he, and he moved under braking on three different occasions. I'll shut up. You talk. But I'm just saying he's not, he's back to himself. And I don't like the way he drives. You know, I liken it to remember in the Vettel era, one of the, after the first turn, if you didn't catch Vettel, he was gone. And then when the pack started catching up and he had to put some racecraft in it, he got a bit dirty. He got a bit dirty. But he, the difference, he got a bit dirty. Schumacher. difference, I think, is that Max refuses to budge. Refuse. Yeah. Like, because he figures, well, I'm ahead in the point. I crashed because what people are forgetting is Max still finished fifth and Norris was out. So he actually gained in the championship and Norris lost in the championship. And, and it's a segue, just a tad bit. What does that say for Nico? That Max could get a 10 second penalty, have a blown out tire, come back to the pit and still go out. And he also had a very long pit stop earlier in the race. And still finish ahead of Jack. Yeah, what? well, yeah. Look, I mean, look, you know, we, we said this the other day. We said this about two weeks ago when we were doing the podcast. And, and I made the comment and you actually, you nerfed it and you put it out there on the internet in the small piece, which is, what is it about certain drivers that when they get their two-year, their new two-year contract, it's like, I don't care about the rest of the season and I fall apart and I go out and I crash and I don't get good pole times. I just don't know. I mean, like you saw Christian squirm in questioning. So it was all about like, let's talk about Max. We talk about Max and then they would ask the question, what are you doing to help Paris? Right. And like, if I had just put pen to paper and said, here you go, Paris, you get a one year plus a one year. Cause that's by the way, what this really is. It's not a two year contract. It's a one plus one. And, and then, you know, Christian tries to throw it off his shoulders by saying, well, you know, he's very good under pressure. He doesn't, he doesn't mind this sort of stuff. He just goes away and tries to remember what it is or how it is that he's able to drive this car. But here's the kicker. We know that Max is starting to struggle against others. So that's the car. That's not just Max. Max hasn't forgotten how to stay at the front and be at the front if the car is right. And Perez, who's now midfielding, basically in the same car. So it just shows you that he can't make improvements. Like you remember Perez used to get, and he would do badly in pole and then he would work his way back up seven, eight places. Not happening anymore. Everybody's catching up. I'm going to, you can put this on my headstone for this year. If I die, Red Bull has lost its edge and it's not that Red Bull did anything wrong. It's everybody else has finally caught up with what the error is. And there's only so far you can push the arrow and we're all right. at the point now. So it's going to make for an interesting 2026. We all know it's pretty much fait accompli for 2024, sorry, 2025. It's pretty much fait accompli for 2024. Max is probably going to win. Is Red Bull going to win? I don't know now. 
I don't know. If but the Mercedes know, stay strong, if the McLarens stay, stay strong as a team, as a pair, there's every chance that they may not win the championship, but, but you Max know, will win the championship. You know what that says is who really dropped the ball in this whole thing? It's Ferrari, because Ferrari had an opportunity to catch up in this Constructors' Championship, but they've had really two not really good races comparatively to being a front runner. They'd have both cars in the points in the, in the top five. They'd be right there in the Constructors' Championship. And they kind of, Leclerc, I mean, is there any other driver in the world other than Hulkenberg that has the luck of this guy? I mean, there's always something with Charles. So yeah, sad. I, you, look, you, I, I like Charles. I like them. I like him as a person. I do not like when he gets on the radio and he's like, I'm an idiot, I'm such an idiot, I'm such an idiot. And I, I hate when he does that. You shouldn't self-deprecate, deprecate like that. And, but we genuinely have to say that if the car was right, you know, and the pit stops and the calls were right, then Ferrari should be in a better place. Now, the other question is, Ferrari really is where Mercedes was two years ago, which is, it has its strengths and weaknesses. So it mm -hmm. depends on the track and it's like, well, the car is great on the, it's the fastest on the straights, but it's no, now the next race it's well, it's the fastest in the slow corners. It's the fastest in the, in the quick corners. And you kind of question it and you go, well, come on now, Ferrari, you know, you've been doing this a long time. They are desperate to get back towards championship level. They haven't had one in, I don't know, 14 years or something. So Ferrari's black um, camp it was Kimi Raikkonen, right? 2009. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, it is Ferrari's time to make a comeback, but you know, they may have slipped, slipped up here because all, for all intents and purposes, Mercedes engine for 2026 is supposed to be sublime. And that's most of the teams and the, and the commentators are talking about that they've already heard, which is incredible that all this stuff has been put out, but apparently they're going to have the strongest engine for 2026. Which means that if Ferrari doesn't get its act together, it may miss the point here because Mercedes, okay, so Mercedes are losing Lewis at the end of this year, which means they're going to be all at sea in 2025. Yeah. Uh, we, we've all discussed ad nausea that George is not a, a leader. He's not a race winner on his own, in his own right. It takes an incident. It takes a moment for him to, to actually get it into podium and first. I'm not saying he's bad. I'm just saying he's just not ready. And, and does he you have know, the truth? What I want to say about that is I think all the hype about the Mercedes engine for 26 is just to attract Matt. I really do. I think they got the PR spin going. I got, they, they're telling everybody, well, we're going to have the best engine. We're going to have the best engine. And so that way, Max is like, oh, really? You're going to have the best engine? So then Max would move to Mercedes and that's what Toto wants. So I think it's a lot more hype than, and, than meat and potatoes. I really do. I don't deny the roller coaster that has been used recently, but at the same time, the, this, about the engine came out before, before 2024 started. It was, it was in the making in 2023, and this was before Lewis was going to jump ship. And we didn't know that Lewis was going to jump ship until the 1st of February. So whilst the roller coaster has now grown or the moss, you know, the stone rolling down the hill gathers its moss and goes quick, whatever. It is the point that this wasn't just a rumor that's been sort of propelling in 2024. It has been repeated in 2024. Is that something that each total was using as a big stick to try and get max potentially? I think it would be, I look, if you want to have this discussion, I think it would be disastrous for Mercedes, Mercedes image, Mercedes team to bring Max, which means you are bringing Max and Yoss. So unless Max can say, dad, off you go, shuffle off like Lewis's dad did. Not that Lewis's dad was poisonous to the teams, but you know, the only way that Max goes to Mercedes truly and, and fairly is, is without Yoss because wherever Yoss goes, trouble. Before the next subject, yeah. sooner or later, you gotta be your own man. Even Max, sooner or later, he's gonna have to tell his dad like, Hey, I think maybe you need to take it back a little bit and let me do this on my own. Because uh, it's not yet because he's defending. Well, he, 
defended him in the press conferences, like this, this whole hullabaloo now about, oh, Yoss was asked not to drive or Christian put the kick in that he wouldn't be able to drive in the right. celebration car. This has been the big news. The yeah. funny thing about this news is it's all been about the, the, the noise around it, but mm -hmm. nobody has actually said what this was. And technically, Yoss was actually never invited to do this. This is what we've heard in the other side was that this is, it was actually, this whole thing has come out of nothing because actually he was never, it was never a true invite. It was never actually put on paper. Yoss was going to drive the car, but it was the fallout of the whole thing. And then the blame and the fingers were pointing at Christian as if he had done this. We actually don't know. And I mean, I am not a defender of Christian Horners, as you know, uh, but at the same time, this actually is coming out of the air and it's just yet again, noise around the Red Bull team. So I think a lot of this, it's almost like the National Enquirer. Or I don't know what they have out here. They have more like scintillating newspapers in England than in anywhere in the world. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, they so, disgrace. It's a disgrace. Yeah. So you're going to go buy a couple just to have them? Yeah. Mirror, just go for the mirror, the, the sun, if they're still in production, I don't know. But the mirror yeah. and sun are the dregs of humanity. And unfortunately, they... They have been the catalyst for what is happening on the internet. Um, yeah. You know, I every, get it. every second post is with, a, is with a crappy headline to get your attention. And then when you actually look at the thing, there's no substance to the body of the, of the article, nothing whatsoever. It's what all about you, the scintillating head. Go ahead. Do you think that Lewis should have gave back that place? Or do you think that Carlos mm -hmm. kind of rode him out, what, which it looked like to me, he just rode him out of the corner and then Lewis passed him off the track and he gave that position back. Do you think he should have gave the position back? I thought it was given up very quickly. The problem again is that we don't hear the true radio conversation. It was, it was apparent afterwards that the team had said we, we might be facing, you know, so he just gave it back. He was just, he's a smart driver and he just went, all right, that was too far. I'll give it back. And it was just quicker to do that. But then he ended up sitting behind him. So it really hurt his race. Pitch but back he was... And then going in the pit. Ah. Barely. I'm, I, still, I mean, I can barely see it. I was like, okay, let me get a magnifying glass. And make sure. I mean, it was, it was mine. It had to be inches or millimeters, as they say in Europe. It had to it, be. It wasn't the front. It was the back. Back went out from under him. That there was no deep, no tires left. He went in too hard, and it was literally like he had to do this. He, the back went out from behind him, and his back, the back wheels went over the white line for sure, like fully. So God love him. He just went, oh, screw it. And he knew when, when he got the radio call, we got a we got a five second penalty. He went, yeah, yeah. He knew he'd lost it on the white line. And, and then what I also thought was incredible was. When he did that, Oscar was on the radio saying, oh, Lewis went over the line. And I'm like, wait, yeah. he saw that and he couldn't wait to rat him out. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's Formula One. That, that's just Formula One. Every edge, they're trained. They're trained to call it in, to moan, to groan, to be drama queens. So that if there's any edge whatsoever, the, the stewards will look at it and give them an edge. And in F1, it's all about the edge, whether it's a split second, you know, way of exiting the pits. Have you noticed all the guys go in sideways now and they're all lining up sideways in the pits? Every single thing is mechanically worked out to get an edge. So with that, it, it's an amazing, I love the art of Formula One. It is truly stunning the way Formula One works. And it is a million, it's a 10 million components that makes up Formula One from a guy in the stands telling them, oh, I'm feeling a bit of a gust coming. You know, we might have rain in 10 minutes to, to people in far off countries developing liquids. It just every single part of Formula One is the pinnacle. I, I don't think that the standard gun beam that sits and watches Formula One truly takes in every part of what makes this what it is, you know? When I go to a race, what I love to do is not only do I go to the garage and talk to the people in the pit, but I go to the pit wall, I talk to them, 
And then I just wander around the track, usually on Friday, because I hate watching practices and stuff like that. Practice is so boring to me. So I wander around, and there's just so many people from the big teams everywhere. Like, everywhere. And people don't really realize how, ma- how much and how many people are working for these two drivers to succeed. Yep. They just yep. don't understand how many... Yep big this thing is for you two know, people. So Mercedes has the biggest team. Okay. Do you know how many people work for the team? And this is not the contractors. This is employed people. I think either 1400 or 1500. It's 2,100 people to put two cars on a track. That's that not. to me is stunning. Yeah. They have the biggest, sorry. Lies. They have the biggest team. Just it was just the way that it worked for them originally. They did cull quite a few people. So two thousand one hundred and something was the the last official. I think that was like two thousand and twenty one. And I know there was a bit of a cull to reduce the teams because of the budget. But the biggest con in Formula One is where the companies get other companies to do research and development for them, mm-hmm. and then their contractors. Right. And it paid for in other ways. And it's like, so, you know, it, it, it annoys me when we talk about the budget, the, 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 the cap, the budget cap, because the other stuff that's going on on the sidelines is tremendous. Now, the other battle that I wanted to mention was, did you see once again, Esteban Ocon and his teammate, Pierre Gatsley? I knew the sooner they pry those two apart, the better. It you know it cannot come quick enough for Gasly, and you know no. what, Gasly, he really I I don't know. I know the car is getting slightly better. I mean, at some point, every you know every team peaks and troughs, peaks and troughs throughout the season, and I have to hand it to to Alpine with their current temperature, and everybody's talking about the team might get sold, and now of course they brought back you know. They brought Gru back. He brought all yeah. Gru is back in the team as a and a counseling advisor or whatever. And so you just kind of go, oh God, so what's gonna happen with it? I mean, there are two teams at the moment that I'm watching, you know, in, in reserve in my brain, and that's Alpine and Aston. Because when you have those big names running those teams, stuff is happening, whether they're gonna get sold or a lot like I know that with Al, Aston they they just sold a load of it to Aramco, which is like right. the biggest company in the world. People don't even, I don't know if people know that, but Aramco is actually the biggest fuel producer. So I always thought it was like BP or mm-hmm. Nico or whatever it be. No, it's Aramco. Yeah. And the name, and the, the hint is in the name, <laughs> Aaron, Aramco. So yeah, that looks like they, they have a potential there of, I reckon in the next couple of years, I reckon Aston will sell out because, you know, he's a businessman. First and foremost, Stroll is a business. And then the other one who's a businessman is our friend. What's his name? Oh, good Lord. Benetton. He used to be, he used to own Benetton. He's now, he's now back with Alpine. I've just, his name's gone from me. We're not talking about Oakmar. No, 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 no. The, the other guy, the guy that was banned from Formula One because of the crash in Singapore. Who's he? Flavio Briatore. There you go. It just had to come from the back to the front of my Flavio Briatore. And he didn't um, only a team though, right? The no, guy but Alpine is like a, a, a fashion. No, 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 no. Flavio Briatore was the fashion guy. Okay. And he, he ran it. So Alpine used to be Renault mm-hmm. and Flavio had it in 2008. Then the, they got caught for the crash incident with Nelson Piquet Jr. Where they told him to crash. He got a lifetime ban, which got overturned, I believe in. 2013, maybe, but he just kept a low profile, but he has been heavily involved in formula one in one way or another. He was, he was Alonso's manager, right? Only up until recently, he was Alonso's manager. So now he's back and trust me, he'll be bringing, that man is billionaire. He would make Stroll look cheap. Okay. And he's now there and you can be damn sure he's bringing money and sponsorships and people to that team under advice, you know, advising roles. Right. Now, a couple of people I also want to mention, I wanted to talk about, what do you think about Oscar's race? Oscar Pichy. 
Piastri. Finished second. I mean, he qualified seventh, so he yeah, I mean, um, up places. So here's my thing. And I think I've said this before. So here's my thing with this. So second driver, okay? This is how I look at it. Second driver, none of these teams have equal drivers, except maybe Ferrari, believe it or not, because Ferrari at least have, Science has days where he does well, and there's days where Charles does well. Mm -hmm. And sorry, I have a fly visitor who just won't leave me alone. And what I think is that we have number two drivers here. So we have George and we have Oscar with, with Lando. And Lando's still not honed completely. Lando still makes the odd mistake, still yeah. beats himself up, self flagellation, all this kind of stuff, like Charles. And maybe that's just the more youthful, you know, drivers that, you know, we're sort of getting used to it. You know, the world has changed. Time has changed. And my, my issue with this is that with the number two drivers, I see George as a little bit like Bottas was, and he is good at getting a pole and he's good at beating Lewis on, you know, pole position time. But when it comes to the race, it starts the same way. He starts and then he goes a bit weak and then he's used up his tires and he falls back a bit. And then the whole thing gets a bit weak. And I mean, in fairness, you know, comes home first this weekend. That's great. But he did it because the other two crashed out. And Oscar, Oscar's a little stronger, I think, than George. I think I mean, Oscar came from very good pedigree in racing. And I think that he is showing signs that he doesn't. I, I did say a while back that Oscar kind of a bit like George gets tired. In mid race, you know, and can lose it a bit, but now I see, I see Oscar putting it to people and fighting his corner and, you know, keeping it in, in forward motion rather than slipping back and getting passed by a lot of people. Right. But he's also a smart racer. Like he doesn't get into hard battles. He's clean. He's very known. He'll, he'll be known as a clean driver. And I, yeah. I respect you're a clean driver. I respect that, you know? Yeah. Um, I like her a lot. He's, I just mm, see a little bit more of his personality. I mean, I know he's new because it's yeah. only, I want to like him. And the the thing about Oscar, I, I love his driving style. I, lo I love his team radio. I love listening to him on a team radio because he's just, he's just so polite and he's just so fair as a, he seems like a good teammate. He seems like just sure. a good teammate, he's, you know? He's managed by Mark Weber. Um, Mark, Mark Weber, yeah. He's managed by Mark Weber. So, and Mark was always, he'd fly off the handle and expletives and whatever. So, he's, this kid's been honed. You know, he's gone through the various leagues, he's gone through the various series. And he is a nice guy. And he, I think he drives cleanly. And when he, when he doesn't do well, you know, he will go and he'll go, okay, you know, it's another race. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah, he is going to be a, a winner. I don't know if he's going to be a championship winner, but in the right car, he could be. So, and I know what you mean about character. He's a little mellow, but at the same time, that's okay. I prefer that than the ranty expletives or self-flagellation or whatever. He's just, he's quite even keeled and I'm okay with that. I, I don't dislike him. I wouldn't put his poster on my wall, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. No, I'm not putting his poster on my wall, but. Yeah, I will say that he is one of my favorite drivers, getting to be. I'm not going to say he's there yet. He's not in my top three or four, yeah. but he's a guy that I really wanted to see do well. I, I like him. I like him in the car. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah. this is going to be this going to be our new thing now. So is would you put his poster on your wall, or do you like him, or do you like him in the car? I like him in the car. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No. Do you want to have dinner? No. Danny Rick, hey, cool for who would you, here's a good one for us. Uh, we'll do this on a podcast one day. Who would, uh, who of the drivers would you have dinner with? Would you? Fine. He's well, a big fine. Yeah. Um, Danny Rick, save this job or going uh, to save no. this job? No, he's not safe. Or he's still gone. No, he's gone. He's gone. And if he's not gone, Red Bull are not doing their job, which is Red Bull have so many juniors they're paying for and educating uh, and dragging through the junior formulas. And if you kept Danny Rick in there, you would be doing one, a lot of them a disservice. I think so. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I, I, I told you, I think Danny is on the money, money train. You get to a point where if you know, you're never going to be in a car that's good enough to deliver you to actually be good enough yourself to win championships. And the rest of your, your career in F1 is about being on the money train. And I actually disrespect. 
I, I just think that that's, you know, you've made 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, go now and let somebody else come up underneath you. If you're, if you haven't made a dent then, and he's got, he's probably one of the drivers with the most amount of wins. Mm -hmm. He won seven races mm -hmm. in his career. So therefore he, he gets to try to prove his point, but he, you know, I'm sorry. He left Red Bull in a snot. He, he was like, I'm never going to beat Max. They're never going to give me a fair crack of the whip. I'm going to Renault. He goes to Renault for huge money. He comes off the back of that. Doesn't He does one race. I think he won. And then he goes off and he goes to McLaren. Huge money. He goes there. Doesn't prove himself well. In fact, leaves under a serious cloud just so they could get Oscar in. And then on the money train again, it's the money train has run out. So he gets, he gets thrown a, a lifeline by Red Bull to do promotions. At that point, he's lucky that he just gets to go into the junior car and he probably got three or four million for that. So. He did run a race at McLaren also. He did. He did. He did. Yeah. But it's it's not enough. Yeah, because that's why Zach got a tattoo. Now, what did you think of this whole thing about Yuki and the... The, the read the R word, I guess. I, it's such a safe world out here. I can't hurt anybody's feelings by using what he said. But what did you think about that whole thing? I mean, I you're going to be shocked. I have no idea what was said. I just know that he got heavily penalized for it. It was like 40 grand. Yes. But I didn't hear what the R word was. And it doesn't, you don't need to repeat. I actually, I've not read any of the articles that it just didn't interest me. And I just, it was like a, it was like a slice of, oh, and Yuki's been fined 40 grand. And right. I was like, what? And I didn't know what he, what he even said. And you know me, I read everything. I, I, you know, I follow everything, but I just couldn't be bugged. I know you love Yuki. I love you. You know The no, thing I don't like about it is yeah. he said what Max has said on the radio before. Max can get by. He was taught English by the mechanics. The guy mm. doesn't even know what the meanings of some of these words that he's saying are. He's just he, parroting. He's just parroting. <laughs> I mean, just think about it. you're learning your English yeah. from the mechanics. Yeah, cool. You're going to be cursing. You're going to be saying all kinds. It's like learning it from a sailor. You're going to be saying all kinds of expletives and saying all kinds of things. He doesn't know what they mean. He has no yeah. idea. None at all what the context is. But they find him heavily. And what I don't like is it seems not only Formula One, but his own team is beating him down to be clean on the radio and take his personality kind of out. And I think that's what helps his inner fire is who he is. So you're taking out what he says on the radio and the things that he says and does, and you're saying, get rid of that. And you're trying to make him into somebody he's not. And I don't well, think let's be realistic. He, his dream, and there is no better dream at the moment is to get into the RB senior team. And he is not the character and he's not good enough driver yet. I'm sorry, if you put him in the senior team tomorrow, you think Perez is bad, he would be way further down. Perez has got a lot more skill than Yuki has. I know Yuki has brought the best out of that car occasionally that he's been given currently. And it has its good days and bad days. It's track dependent, that car, very much so. And Yuki is, he's above average, but that's about it. He's not a star. Do I think that Yuki will ever win a Formula One race? No, I don't. I think he'll be another Hulk. Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg. I, I, I don't see him on the podium. I, I don't see Yuki on the podium. Yeah, he has to be, I mean, he has to get out of RB. That's one. But he has to be in the right team, and I don't know if he'll ever get that chance. But you never know, because he has the Honda money behind him, and maybe... He does. Be the Honda's mystery. coming back. So. Everybody should be under no illusion that Honda is on its way back. That's why Honda didn't want to go. Well, Honda was walking away from Red Bull. They were kind of set up working with them. And at that point, that's probably a bit of a sweeping statement, but it's kind of the truth. Everybody was fed up working with Red Bull because of the way things that and then they behaved and the things they wanted and the way they moaned when they didn't get what they wanted. So Honda has said it wants back in seeing that it's now got the engine in the car that is winning the last couple of years they're like well wait a minute we're missing a trick 
and they have stated they want to come back into Formula One. Now, how they will come back in, I do not know, because with the state of Formula One right now, and as you know, with Andretti and everything else, the other teams are fighting hard not to let a, a, an extra pair of cars on the, on the, onto the grid. And I think that's wrong. I think there should be 11 teams, maybe 12 teams, but because of the way all of the, all of the, sorry, the European races are set up, they don't have room for them on the, on the grid, on the, sorry, the pit lane. They just don't have, with all the modern technology and the motorhomes and everything else, they don't have room for them. Which is strange because before, didn't they have, I mean, in the seventies, they had like 14, 15 teams, didn't they? Yeah, well, so it was, it may be, I, I'm, I wouldn't, I don't want to quote myself on it, but I know with Formula 2, there's usually like 24, 26 cars on the grid. Yeah, and well, Indy they piled have, them up like five. I, I just don't want to, would all the money that's out there expand the track a little bit? The cars are supposed to be getting a little smaller, not much from, from what I've seen for the 26. Not enough to put an extra four cars on the track. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, enough for two more cars. And I, I think Formula oh, One sorry. is missing out on, I mean, they turned down Porsche, which was blow my mind. Porsche? You're going to turn down Porsche? Probably scared. Probably scared. I mean, Porsche, of all people to say no to, like yeah. the iconic 911, you're going to say no to those guys? And then now they're getting turning down Andretti, which, you know, sooner or later I think Andretti's going to be in because I guess he's getting Congress involved. You know, senators are getting that involved. Means, that means nothing. That means nothing. That's just bloated, uh, backhanded way of trying to do things. The problem there, the only way that Congress could be involved is to lean on Liberty Media, who happen to be American. Liberty Media don't care. Don't forget, Liberty Media came to where they are with Formula One because of their success of airing American football. You know, like they, if you, if you look on the stock exchange, there are two Liberty media. Um, and so that, that says how big it is and how big an operation, it is. but who is going to come to formula one in the future? So it will, all, there will always be changes. Like there's been, I think there was five teams were vying when they thought there was a potential to come in, there was five teams vying. So there was a, a tech billionaire who wanted to run a team. There was Andretti. There was Honda again, and there was also was Audi, and there was another team. And yeah, Porsche were in the running, but of course, it's really Audi Porsche anyway. Yeah. You know, they're all in the same family, Vog family, V A G. I think. Uh, what do you full, think right? now that we got Silverstone coming up? What's yeah. your prediction to, uh, for Silverstone? Will Red Bull fans be attacked? Will Red Bull fans be booed? Well, Max for Stephen. That was pretty funny. So, so I was going to do a piece. Uh, I was going to do a piece. I can say it on here, but I'll still put it out later, which is going to be something like Silverstone have asked that the fans don't boo Max. No, mm -hmm. they, sorry. Silverstone has asked that the fans don't yell and boo Max. So I was going to go, Paul went to the print shop. <laughs> so I didn't have to yell. I could just hold it up. Well, I think that Max is bordering again on evil Max, uh, which, you know, he was for a few years. And I think that Silverstone, uh, I don't know what the weather report is like. And I've been trying to look it up. I just I didn't have time I'm working hard. And um, when rain like it was today, I'm walking, we're walking down over the tower bridge. It started raining. We got to the end of the tower bridge. It stopped raining. He walked up well, the yards. It started raining again. And then it stopped raining. And when we got to the castle, it started raining, and then it stopped raining. Yeah. Off and it, it, our horrible rain. Our, it's only, we always have the same repetitive weather in Ireland, and it, we just, we've just we had no summer this year. It's been horrific. So, yeah. uh, sorry if that puts any tourists off coming here, but just, it has been a horrible, horrible summer. Anyway, back to Silverstone. So the reason I asked about the weather prediction is because that could turn everything on its head. And don't mm. forget, the best part about Silverstone is all the runoffs are grass. And we get much better throws and spills when it's grass. And yeah. it is a stunning track in its own right. It is, okay, so the British fans, we get British, British commentary. So we always make a big, big deal about how great Silverstone is and how it's one of the most historic. And don't forget, uh, the one thing we don't talk about is the Lewis Hamilton straight. Right. Uh, um, but 
I, I hope and pray that Mercedes will be very strong there. I think McLaren will be strong, but now you see, this is going to be track specific. So we're going to see some different movements this time. Ferrari could come back into the fray. You know, like I genuinely, if you asked me to make a bet on who's going to be standing on the podium this weekend, I wouldn't take the bet. I really wouldn't. And that's saying something. And it's not just a case of, oh, I know I'm a, I'm a particular fan of a particular person on a particular team. This time round, I'm going to go, I don't know. And will there be animosities? I mean, if Max wins this race, you better put your fingers in your ears because it won't be for cheering. It, there will be, there'll be a lot, sorry, fly again. He will not leave me alone. It's, you know, there will be, there will be issues that will be booing if he wins this race. It just is what it is. He is, look, I, I'm not going to be poisonous tonight. So there's no point, but you know, I will say one thing. Max is the least popular F1 champion of many, many, many decades. And Max doesn't care. Doesn't care. Doesn't bother him. He is not there for the fans, as we know, because he never thanks them, ever. Oh, yes, it's great to see the fans, is what he says. But he never thanks his fans for following him. Whereas you can't get loops up to a microphone without going, and the team have worked so hard and I want to thank my yeah. fans. I mean, you know, it's every single time he gets here. Every single mic. time. And I just, actually, it gets repetitive when he says the same things. But they are key key statements to to deflect from situations. He, it's also thanking everybody for the true supports that they are. But then, and he has mad fans. Like uh, Lewis has incredible amount of fans. Lewis has, um, just on Facebook alone, he has 6.2 million fans and Max has 2.1. Right. So, and, and when you go then to Instagram and everything else, I've said this to be before, Liberty Media went to Lewis Hamilton before they bought Formula One and said, we see that you're doing something with this social media thing. And they took a lot of advice from him. And then they made every team follow rule and start their social media and That's push right. and push and push so that they would become something. And then of course we had that drive to survive thing that exploded it for a lot more fans. So Lewis was ahead of the curve with that. Anyway, predictions for Silverstone. I'm not giving one. I'm not giving. Genuine. And that's how, that's how neutral I'm staying on this because, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I don't think that we're going to get the truth on Friday in practice either. No, no. I, and I, I can't wait. It's going to be my birthday present to my son and Hello, you know, wow. routine. And we're going to have a blast, just him and I. And what day is it? What day is his birthday? His, he's a July 4th baby, actually. Oh, one of my best friends, Adam Mercedes fan, and a very good friend of mine in the UK is Graham, and his birthday is on July 4th. Yeah. Well, uh, Paul, we, been great. And, you know, yeah. there's been some background noise. I'm going to take that out. Uh, and I want everybody to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell notification. Watch, I have this little thing, and I made it up. Watch, here it comes. So, like, subscribe to our channel remember to follow us on youtube and we're also on instagram and listen to the podcast on spotify amazon apple and wherever YouTube. and youtube yeah and wherever you listen to your podcast thanks paul and we'll see you next week on another episode of America One. Go ahead, Paul. You want some? You're, wel you're welcome. I love being on this podcast. And I just want to say to everybody, if you are a Lewis Hamilton supporter, please come and join us on the Facebook page, Sir Lewis Hamilton, Ferrari F1. You are most welcome. And we look forward to your contributions and posts. Keep on racing, everybody.